Welcome to module 3 of our master class on AI in healthcare, introduction and basic concepts. I hope you are having a productive learning experience so far and you were able to organize your thoughts during the short break. In this module, we'll be talking about the challenges to adoption of AI in healthcare and we will also be discussing about the ethical issues in AI. And finally, we'll be seeing the key takeaways from our master class. Now, once we know what is AI, why do we need AI in healthcare? And what are the various use cases of AI in healthcare? We have the question that how do we implement AI properly in the, uh, the field of healthcare? The answer to this question is very important to ensure that more and more adoptable AI solutions can be developed, which are able to make real impact at the patient's bedside. Of course, it comes to our mind that if so much things are possible and there is so much buzz uh, there and there's a lot of investment as well, then why things are not changing? Uh, especially in healthcare, when we see other industries which are being revolutionized by the use of AI, but we are not seeing the impact in healthcare. So there are various reasons for that, starting with data. Uh, the data in healthcare is quite fragmented and siloed. There is still question regarding who owns the data. And once we determine who is the owner of data, then we have to define the proper data pipelines and the proper process of how data will be fed into the system and distributed and used for training the AI models. Uh, the data should be secure, uh, the privacy should be maintained and it should be interoperable. Uh, that is easily transferable between uh, different healthcare facilities. Then of course there's the black box uh, effect, which I told, when I told you the deep neural networks, uh, we cannot understand how they are functioning inside. So the clinicians are always worried about uh, the result that they give. Uh, and even the patients, when they are told about that this, uh, how the model predicted, we do not know, then it creates a sense of mistrust and discomfort. So there's more and more uh, advoca advocacy towards explainable AI. So even if a model is less accurate, but it is more explainable, then we try to use such models in healthcare uh, to remove the black box effect. Then of course the regulations. The regulations always lag behind the technology. And we have seen this with other powerful technologies as well in the past. But what is different this time is that the pace of this technology like AI is too fast and even the regulatory agencies are finding it difficult to keep pace. But as more and more regulations uh, come up in proper way, the adoption of AI is going to go into the exponential stage just like other industries. And then, you know, in healthcare, there are different stakeholders. The, the three primary stakeholders are patient, provider, and payer. And often they have conflicting lines of thought. Uh, of course, anything is common, which is the patient interest, but sometimes the incentives are not aligned. And this creates a lot of problem in adoption of a tool because something which is good for clinicians might not be so profitable for the providers and vice versa. So we have to find out ways of aligning the stakeholders and developing proper solutions. Uh, understanding the workflow, understanding the dynamics, uh, developing a systems thinking and creating good artificial intelligence so that it gets adopted. Then, of course, we know that the healthcare workflow, unlike any other industry, is quite complicated and a lot of things are not predictable. Uh, what, what we think will happen uh, sometimes doesn't happen and any AI tool which is developed has to incorporate this uh, to be adopted in the uh, in the workflow of healthcare and so, uh, we see that if an AI solution is good only for particular situations but it fails in complex workflows then it will not be adopted in healthcare and finally of course the skill set which is lacking there is a lot of debate going on how much regarding how much AI education should be included for a clinician and where do we include because it, the curriculum is already overburdened so these are the six main challenges. There are many more, but uh, these are the main ones that are affecting the adoption of AI in healthcare. Talking a bit about the regulations, uh, there's a act called HIPAA, which is Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. This is a federal law that requires the creation of national standards to protect sensitive patient health information 
also called as PHI, from being disclosed without the patient's consent or knowledge. So there are 18 protected health identifiers like name, address, social security number, etc. that need to be removed in order to anonymize the data before it is shared for developing AI models and there's a strict penalty for not complying to the HIPAA Act. A similar regulation exists in the EU which is called the GDPR, the full form is General Data Protection Regulation and it applies to domains beyond healthcare also and according to GDPR there are three types of personal data that are particularly relevant to healthcare industry. The data concerning health, genetic data and biometric data and these data have to be protected. There are many publicly available data sets which can be used for developing AI models. So one of them is the MIMIC data, data set which is called Medical Information Mod for Intensive Care. Uh, now we have the fourth version which was released in 2021. It is a large de-identified publicly available collection of medical records for over 40,000 patients admitted to ICUs. The data includes vital signs, medications, lab measurements, observations and notes charted by care providers, fluid balance and many more data. So this is a resource which you can check out if you are interested in developing AI models. Then of course moving on to the ethical issues, there is always a question that are humans completely ethical? Uh, of course not, but whenever we develop something then we are expected to incorporate as much as ethical principles as possible. Because if a machine makes a mistake then we have to uh, decide who is liable and who is responsible for the mistake. And only if we do that we can improve upon it so that next time it doesn't happen. So here we see an example of a self-driving car in which the car has to make a decision. Uh, they have assumed a completely autonomous car which has no human control and it has different options whether to kill the pedestrians or the car occupant and it takes decisions based on different scenarios. So now there are no correct or incorrect answers. So what is What seems correct to us might seem incorrect for the algorithm. And the important point to uh, realize is that all these questions will come up as more and more AI tools uh, are developed especially in healthcare and we need to start talking about these things and uh, we have to develop proper ethical models so that uh, uh, these issues are, are de dealt in a proper way. So the ethical questions can be clubbed into different categories. The most important question is about bias. You must have read a lot about uh, how some algorithms were found to have bias against people of particular background and this is not expected although as a human species uh, our historic data is full of biases but then uh, there are ways to reduce bias whenever you are training a model there are specific checkpoints and checklists which if you ensure uh, they are followed then you can reduce bias in a fair way then of course who is liable or responsible for AI because there are multiple players involved in development of AI model it's a teamwork so you need to fix the liabilities of the mistakes which are bound to happen. It is not going to be a 100% accurate system. So you have to answer these questions beforehand so that no confusion happens later. Then of course security. Uh, the cyber security issue is there because everything is on the cloud and the clouds are again owned by particular companies and the entire sensitive data is in the hands uh, and how they protect the data, uh, specifically healthcare data, which is as crucial as financial data. So we can take a bit of learning from financial areas and apply them to healthcare as well. Then of course, uh, the question is, who is made wealthy by the use of AI? So uh, emphasis is more on open source models, but everything cannot be open source. So we have to see that uh, the adoption of AI doesn't create wealth inequality because someone who owns AI can make enormous profits out of it uh, and it will create more problems instead of solutions. Uh, same with power and control because these technologies are so powerful and the government has to put a strong foot forward and make it not entirely private because then again the power and control is questionable. So these are some good machine learning practice principles which are like guiding principles for medical device development which US FDA has come up with. Some of the important points are that the focus should be placed on performance of human AI interaction like AI and human should come complement each other. 
uh, also the training data set should be independent of test sets and there are many more so these things help in reducing the bias and improving the quality of care and addressing a lot of ethical issues surrounding AI devices so you can go through this uh, document and you can see it on the website where they have given more details so whenever you are working with an AI medical device company uh, you can make sure that these guiding principles are uh, followed which can help in developing a good AI model then there's always a question to me whenever I give a talk that what about the liability part or litigation part if a physician is using AI is he or she liable for the injury to the patient so there's no correct answer to this at this point of time because the regulations and models are still being developed and this is a paper you can use it as a guideline and you have to be careful in two areas which are the red ones uh, AI will either recommend standard of care or not standard of care and then it can be correct or incorrect and you will either follow or reject it so these are the various possibilities uh, depending on patient outcome uh, so the most important ones are when you uh, reject the standard of care suggested by AI or accept the non-standard care suggested by AI and it leads to a bad patient outcome then you are liable for injury so this is just a very simplified guideline for clinicians to stay safe in the developing area era of AI once regulations are set, once the things are clear, then it will become more easy for clinicians to understand when to use and when not to use AI. Then this is a very burning question that is AI getting rid of jobs and am I going to be replaced by AI? So my belief is that AI will not replace health professionals because it is very difficult to replace the human touch, which is the core essence of healthcare. So we need to come out of discussing this question altogether and instead the question should be that will it help us in providing better care to our patients and help us in being more efficient and enhancing our human potential to the best instead of acting like computers every day in the healthcare setting so i think those healthcare professionals who understand and use ai will replace those who don't to strengthen my point these are the different different pros of humans and machines uh, so there are some features for humans like they can make decisions in within complete data they can be creative and flexible in their approach and they can uh, react to unpredictable events but machines on the other hand they can perform complex and rigid calculations with high accuracy they can repeat the tasks continuously and precisely and they can monitor multiple channels in real time and they can store and uh, structure and recall big data so they both have their advantages and uh, disadvantages and when they are combined together they will make the future of humanity so the key takeaways are you will agree with me that data is the new oil and ai has the potential to become new electricity so it is basically a technology that is going to impact all industries not just healthcare and it is going to impact the entire world as a fourth industrial revolution and of course with these things more and more shift is going towards personalized intelligence based healthcare i showed you that research and publications continue to see exponential growth so it is important to stay updated and now with certain ai tools you can summarize the research just by a matter of clicks and you can consume a large amount of research in a small amount of time there's potential need for reskilling and upskilling so that we can partner and utilize ai not just be the end consumers like we we are stuck with electronic medical records and of course gray areas exist but they need to be resolved with time so this brings us to the end of master class on ai in healthcare introduction and basic concepts uh, i know that a lot of you will be having questions regarding whatever we covered in this master class so please feel free to reach out to me and i will be happy to answer all of them thank you